Hello. Hi there. Good afternoon. And welcome to series two of Meet at the Hotel Bar. After being tangled up in tabloid dramas, hitting the podcast charts, and unearthing some of the best kept touring stories you will ever hear, we are back again. Bigger and better. Who knew that was even possible? If you are new here, we are Freddie, JC, and Huss from the band Floors, a three piece indie pop band from London via Huddersfield. Since we started touring and traveling the globe, we realized that there are so many funny things that happen on and off stage, and so many stories that never get shared with the rest of the world. They just stay in the dressing rooms and tour buses of the bands and artists that you love. Until today. In this podcast, we're lifting the lid on life on the road, and where better to meet up and tell those touring tales in a place every touring musician knows very well the trusty hotel bar. Why? Why? Why so trusty? Well, it's, it's kind of like a nod to cocktail culture of the 1950s. <laughs> Where has he pulled that from? In today's episode, we met up with Alice Merton in our favourite hotel bar. You guessed it, the Halo Hotel Bar at Islington's Hilton. Is that like the third time or the fourth time we've been? Ah, <laughs> uh, we're residents now. <laughs> the British-based German-Irish Canadians singer-songwriter's debut single. See, I did it. Debut single No Roots has racked up over 340 million streams alone. She's performed at major festivals across the world, including Coachella, and recently supported Pink on her stadium tour. Stay tuned to hear stories of nightmare flights to Prague, what it's like to start your own record label, how to remove a tick from your behind, and why margarine is a non-negotiable on her rider. This is Alice Merton coming up on Meet at the Hotel Bar. Meet at the Hotel Bar. We are good. We good? Okay. Let's do it. Let's roll. So, Alice, thank you so much for, um, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome to Meet at the Hotel Bar. I'm really thirsty, so I'm going to ask you the first question. Um, and the first question, as always, is what would you like to drink? Um, what would I like to drink? I would love a gin and tonic. Ooh. That is a good choice. What an epic choice. <laughs> so our rule on me at the hotel bar is we have to get the same as you. So, Freddie, let's go order four gin and tonics. Cool. I've You're not had a gin and tonic in so long. Are we talking reg- regular gin as well, not pink gin? Yeah, no, regular, regular, regular gin. Yeah. And why is that, if I'm allowed asking? Just know, not your drink? Just, or? No, I, I love a gin and tonic. Okay. Um, just haven't had one in a while. What should we get? What kind of gin should we get? The most expensive. Okay, gin. can we get four of the most expensive um, gin and tonics, please? <laughs> <laughs> but singles. Sing, singles, <laughs> please sing. Oh, um, the drinks have arrived. All right. We, we've got to pour them ourselves, oh, though. Yeah. Hold on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 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 okay, cheers. Cheers, everyone. I cheers. Completely forgot we have to cheers, cheers. first. Okay, That's all right. cheers, guys. Thank you so much for having me. That's all right. Um, so, we'll, we'll get stuck in. Um, all the gin was at the bottom. All the gin. <laughs> Did you not stir it? I didn't stir it. <laughs> um, so, how is, um, how is festival season um, treating you? I, I saw you've, you just supported Pink going straight there. Um, <laughs> it looked insane. Tell us all about it. Um, it was insane. I have never supported um an artist that big Mm -hmm. um i was blown away like i I honestly don't know how to process those kinds of gigs because there's so much pressure up to the gig and then after the gig all of that gets released and even looking out onto fifty thousand people is that it was shit (laughs) yeah it was it was fifty thousand people i think this is definitely the biggest show we've ever played yeah um and it was cool, though, because we got to play a full set. Um, but there were definitely points in our set where I was like, I don't know if I'm reaching anyone. I can only see, like, the first five rows. Yeah. And I started getting in my head. And then I think towards, like, the second half of the show, I was really enjoying it. I had so much fun. Um, but, yeah, afterwards, I just, like, collapsed. I was like, oh, my God, how do people do this? Uh, that's crazy. Does she, does she still do the... Um acrobatics mm, where mm-hmm. she like flies above everyone and, and sings and doesn't miss like a beat yeah she does that still she flies over the whole audience on her last song have you guys been to one of her shows no i've okay, only ever seen go. it on i saw it at the amazon documentary a while ago <laughs> oh, <laughs> where, but that was, was so good wasn't it so good. when i watched that documentary i was like blown away by her as a person because yeah. i had no idea um, she like, travels with the kids, doesn't she? Yes. But she also, which is really cool, um, in each city does like 
vacation activities with the kids. It's not like, okay, we have to go backstage now and wait there. It's like, let's go cycling along the Dono. Um, and I think that's really cool about her and her family is that they really try and keep everything quite um, grounded. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was just such a cool experience. And so did you know watching that documentary what you were about to be doing? Um, I definitely knew what I signed up for, but I mean, it's so different when you're in that position and actually have to like face 50,000 people yeah. and also try and convince them that you're worth listening to. Um, I think that's something I definitely struggle with. Even if it's like, I don't know, 10,000 people. I, I've always struggled with these thoughts of like the whole imposter syndrome yeah. thing of like, why am I here? Are you guys even interested in what I have to say? Or are you just waiting for the main act to come? So, um, yeah, but it was really, really fun. And uh, I don't know if I could do it every day, <laughs> but uh, I, it, was, it was insane. It was really cool. Sick. Sounds epic. And so you've toured all over the world. Um, what would you say is your favorite city to tour in? Mm, what's my favorite city to tour in? Um, I really love touring in uh, Portland. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Oregon. Portland, um, but it is a really cool city. Isn't it where they invented Nike? Wasn't Th it like that's Nike? That's possible. There's I like don't a know. massive Nike store there, I feel. Is there? I know there's a massive yeah. bookstore, Powell's oh, okay. Bookstore. Um, I think it's like the oldest and biggest bookstore in America. Um, and I like to go there, but I just think the people are really nice there. They really appreciate music. You give a show and they, I don't know, they just, they're nice. They, they get really excited and... I've had really good experiences there, but I think our best crowd has always been, weirdly enough, in um, in Czechia. So like Prague, or mm -hmm. we did a festival called um, uh, Colors of Ostrava, and it was so cool. And the people were so insane. I just feel like they're really grateful for music there. So, or they just like our music. I don't know. They're yeah. <laughs> either or. We've never we've never been to Prague before. We've never played a show. We, we have. You guys should to go Prague. to Prague. It is insane. It's so beautiful. But you haven't visited there either. I've been, uh, yeah. I've, I've Isn't it quite a stag do -y place? So, so Have this you been is, on yeah. a stag do, JC? No, I played a gig oh. there once but oh, okay. when I was like sessioning, but yeah. This is what I learned the last time I went to Prague. Um, so I had to fly into Prague to do another festival this year. And I flew from London. I've never flown from London before. And my flight was literally the worst flight I've ever been on. There was a stag do of like 40 <laughs> guys. They were all in like mid 30s, late, I say early 40s, late 30s and they were so drunk yeah. and they were throwing things at the um at the flight at the again, flight, attendant. flight attendants yeah. um they were being rude one guy got in a fight with another flight attendant um then they were like throwing food at me this one guy was try like i was reading a book just because i was sat beside two of them and i was just trying to ignore it and this one guy just wouldn't leave me alone um and kept like just saying really inappropriate things as well um and i was just and, at some, and, and so when there was turbulence, it got even worse because everyone started screaming because they thought it was really funny. So they'd be screaming and then the kids were screaming because there were kids on the, it was honestly like the worst flight I've ever had in my entire life. And I was like, I had no idea Prague was this much of like a stag do yeah, yeah. city. Yeah. Are you able to mind. avoid it once you're there? Are there areas that you can go to and still avoid the, the British left? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, the thing is, I've only noticed it this year. Every other year, we've always been in a part of Prague, I feel, where like, I've never noticed it. But this year, in particular, it was insane. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, so just Brits abroad, Stag Do Boys, yeah. if you're listening, it's a thing, just right? pipe yeah. down on the flights, okay? Well, didn't, yeah, didn't, didn't be Amsterdam, nice to the flight attendants. Yeah. yeah. I feel like yeah, Amsterdam, like, kicked up, they, they changed, like, a law or something, did they? Or? Oh, if, yeah. I think they're really trying to tighten up on the whole drinking culture and the... Uh, the rowdy British thing. Well, the thing is, you shouldn't... I, I mean, this is my personal opinion. If you're drunk and rowdy, you shouldn't be let on a plane. Because a plane is a situation... If there is an emergency, like, how are you going to kind of yeah. help this person? Or how are you going to, like, deal with this person? And the fact that one of the guys got into an actual fight with the flight attendant... I'm like, surprised he, he didn't have to, so like, like, divert and, like, Oh, land I was surprised else. as well. This one guy... Because I, I, I was then resat beside another dude because the guy that started a fight was sat then in my seat um, because we had to rearrange the seating settings because he was just going ballistic. Um, I was then sat by, a, I think, a Russian dude, and he's like, 
in Russia, we were tied this man up. <laughs> and, and <laughs> like a Wolf of Wall Street where he wakes up and he's got like seatbelts around him. That's what I thought the protocol was. Yeah. If someone kicks off, I, th- I thought that was the protocol too, but they, the flight attendants did such an amazing job of staying cool. I would have lost my shit. Yeah. I already lost my shit. Well, like I was just like, get me off this plane. Get me off. Like I, I was so upset. Did you see in the news the other day with the, uh, where someone opened up the fucking door? Yeah. Someone opened the... During mid- the flight. Yeah. I read flight. about that. But why? Were they like in a panic I situation? It's probably on the air? way to Prague, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> probably was. Um, we all love a travel day story in floors. So what is the best travel day or day off that you have had that comes to mind? So are we talking about like best travel day as in like everything was perfect and everything turned out like amazingly? Are we talking about horrible? It can be horrible? anytime you're on the road between shows or an interesting place that you've been to whilst on a day off. Like a memorable, something that, that or comes to mind. if you were on a flight to Prague and it all kicked <laughs> off on a plane, but we've just covered that. So an- another one. <laughs> um, gosh, I mean, we've had a lot of really nice like off days. Um, I think one memorable day would definitely be <laughs> we all landed into um i think it was somewhere in serbia um about to play a festival no sorry it was montenegro sea dance festival we all bloody hell <laughs> okay okay we're gonna, all okay just gonna rewatch i think <laughs> goodness <laughs> me that i thought i'd been shot <laughs> We'll, we'll slightly rewind. Do you want me to start the story again? Yeah. It's, so you were, I, you were somewhere. We were somewhere. We were, I think, about to play Sea Dance Festival. Um, we all landed. None of, our, none of our bags and none of our instruments landed. Oh, no. <laughs> so they all got stuck. And, um, and we had a pretty good slot at this festival, but no instruments. And I think we were just panicking all for a day. We are like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Um, and in the end, we had to play the show half playback. So my vocals were live and um, and everything else. We had to call up my producer and be like, I'm so sorry, we need all these songs without the vocals for an hour and a half set. Can you do this within a day? I mean, it was fine for him because he had time in, uh, during the Like day. a whole set of songs? Yeah, because we didn't have anything. Um, and like this place we were playing at in Montenegro didn't have any stores where you could like buy instruments and stuff and it was a disaster sounds- but i feel like i'm saying i'm talking about a really depressing day off like i feel like <laughs> I, f- I feel like i should be thinking of something that was really nice I'm okay have you really been on nice any adventures off. like places within a city so for example when we spoke to woody from bastille they went to a banana museum yeah. In, the, in the in the desert somewhere, and so what was this banana museum about? About bananas, like different it's types of bananas, or things bananas. that were shaped as bananas. Everything yeah. banana related, apparently. T-shirts, wow. pencil sharpeners, yeah, everything. Was wow, just bananas. Yeah. That's so interesting. I feel like it's a very American thing to do to be like, let's open up a museum about. What is okay, this guy's round two. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> sabotage. It's a guy. He's, He's got a rival got, podcast. It, it looks like a. <laughs> It's gone right through me. Throwing it around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what's, what's the predictions on the third? <laughs> it's going to be a hassle. How long it's going to be until he does it again? <laughs> I'll edit a third one in there. Uh, <laughs> we'll be coming back here again. I yeah. haven't been to a banana museum. Okay, I'll tell you that. So it's a no on the banana museum. I'm trying um, to think if. Um, do you have any like things that you do as a band that you sort of keep up when you're traveling so you try and hit a studio in a different city or try and go to a garden center in a different city or I, I think the thing is everyone in my band is so different mm. so i've known the guys now for nine years we oh, nice. um, same band same band yeah so we all met at university but we're all very different so reggie for example reggie's like a machine and he goes and finds the nearest gym mm-hmm. so he goes and works out and that's his day um then luca huge coffee nerd um but not but like drip coffee or filter coffee that's his kind of thing um and so he goes off and finds the best coffee place and Mm -hmm. then the best restaurant to kind of just have a really chill day um i'm recovering from anxiety and from just in general like lack of sleep so i just tend to sleep yeah. Um, and then Basti goes <laughs> and he just like goes on like a five hour walk. Um, so it's really funny. Like we have moments where we spend time together and that'll often be like at a museum or we'll go and we'll go to a bookshop, for example. Or like there's this donut place in Berlin 
um, that everyone in the band loves. Like they specialize in um, in vegan donuts. Sick. Yeah. Um, they That's are. Nice. They and are great. You said museums, so next is donut museums. The next is right? a, yeah, banana donut yeah. museum. Have you ever um, had a cronut before? I have not. No, have you? No, I feel like I've heard of them. Donut and a croissant. Yeah, yeah. M- bundled together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're like a like a Ligo. Tig- <laughs> on the liger of the bakery world. <laughs> <laughs> and moving on. Yeah, uh, sorry, that's, that's we'll leave that there. <laughs> the beauty of um, live gigs is uh, that not everything goes according to plan. Oh yeah. We, we've already had um, uh, equipment not turning up. What would you say is the worst thing that's happened to you on stage? Um, I mean, I would definitely say like embarrassing things in the sense of, um, like tripping, those Mm -hmm. kinds of things where you can rewatch it and you know, other people might be rewatching it and you're like, Oh my God, this is so embarrassing. Um, but I'd say like the worst thing for me is actually if something happens where someone misses a cue and we miss the cue for the whole song, um, like this thing happens, we played Ziggit Festival last year. Nice. Um, and it was our first, like, one of our first bigger festivals. We got to play the main stage. Um, and my bass player, who kind of was in and out of the band a little bit, um, he decided that he wanted to, he was tired of touring. He's like, I want to start a family. I want to kind of take some time off. But he's like, I still want to do this gig with you guys. So he was a little bit kind of in a different headspace. Um, and he, um, he didn't get his cue for the song. And then I didn't get the cue for the song. And then, like, a few bars in, we all, like, I look at Luca, my drummer, and he's like, we have to start again. And Uh-oh. normally I try and hide it where I'm like, somehow we're, we've had, like, technical difficulties. But I just, I was so ashamed and so annoyed and so embarrassed that, like, yeah, we had to start the song again. I mean, the audience was still super lovely, um, but it was painful. Yeah. It's one of those things that you relive and you're like, fuck, this could have been avoided. Um, we all had to be, but the thing is those things happen. And I've talked to other bands about it as well. And it's like one of those things, whether it's technical difficulties, whether it's um, something hasn't turned on or you don't hear your your click or whatever, yeah. or you don't yeah. hear, you miss your counting or whatever. Like, it's just, it's. I feel like everyone we've spoken to has had a, an issue like that from whether it's been the playback rig setting on fire. Yeah. Setting on like, fire. Like the bass amp <laughs> blowing up for Hugh oh from the Coop. So like equipment failure is like, yeah. Or it's like a real even, thing. Even just not hearing something, like you said, yeah. that can yeah. trigger all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for me, if I, so if I have a bad sound in my ears, which happens sometimes, especially at festivals, like you don't get a proper sound check or whatever. So you just kind of have to go with the flow. Yeah. And then, um, if I can't hear myself properly or I feel like I'm singing off key, Let's I get what? so in my head about it. I just uh-huh. get so paranoid and start freaking out. And I think that's what happened at the gig as well. So like that Ziggit show for me was a really difficult one. It was such a cool festival and I was looking forward to it so much. Um, Cause that was also the year. So we, we opened up for Bastille. So that's how we met um, Woody. Um, and then we figured out that we're at the same festival on the same stage right after each other. Wow. Um, and so we're like, this is so cool. We'll see each other in August again. Um, and then coming off stage, having that kind of panic and anxiety of like, I don't know if it was a good show. I feel like I could have done way better. I couldn't hear myself. We had to restart a song. I don't know. I think that for me just, it, it stays in your head. Maybe, I don't know how it is for you guys. Like, have you guys had really difficult shows where something's gone terribly wrong yeah i think so my sort of ethos is just even if it goes all so terribly wrong just smile and have a good time yeah if it goes wrong that enough that you have to stop and restart just laugh about it yeah because everyone that's there watching you wants to see you have a good time yeah and it must be it's so hard not to get in your own head about it yeah like, yeah you know exactly what just happened, but they don't. Yeah. yeah. So like, so that's, that's the other thing. There's so many times that things go wrong and like, no one has a clue. Like, and you, yeah. you might think that you've had like the worst, like, oh, that song's terrible. Or like you come off stage and you be like, oh, we missed this and that. And they're like, what? People are like, what? Like, yeah. no, I didn't hear that. Like, and some, some people that like, you know, that know the songs or like even like management or like, like it, we've, we've done things where we've spoke to Andy, like our sound guy. And we're like, oh, I didn't. 
didn't notice that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's so much that happens on stage that no one else is aware of. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's really funny about it, if you think about it. Like, yeah. it's. I think it's really funny because... Um, some, when we were op- when we were opening the shows for for Bastille, um, they would have like shitty shows as well. They're like, oh, we didn't like this went wrong, but the audience doesn't see that. You're yeah. like you're standing in the audience and everyone's like, yeah, this is awesome, this is so great. Yeah. And then you come backstage and then everyone's like, oh man, like this was we fucked this up. But that gave me so much relief because I was like, okay, this is normal. Yeah. This is okay. Like I, it's okay that I get in my head about this stuff, and it's okay that stuff goes wrong. And maybe people don't even notice it. Especially yeah. so. at like festivals where you literally will have a 15 minute line check. How can yeah. you possibly eradicate all the problems in the world exactly. with 15 minutes plugging stuff in? Yeah. Like, it's gonna go wrong. Yeah. I Just think it's also like with pop music these days, like unless you have a, a 20 piece band, there is gonna be an element of track and backing track. Yeah. And I think most bands are at the point now where they're willing to accept that they're willing to let the public know like every artist like you said always talks about track and technical stuff yeah and that just comes with its own world of problems or potential problems absolutely Um, yeah it's a minefield isn't it everyone does it slightly differently yeah the Um, the playback rig is the the scariest bit of equipment isn't it for sure absolutely glad I'm not in charge (laughs) (laughs) so who's in charge with you guys I I run it okay yeah and it it, touch wood it has never done us wrong it is that's so good rock solid I'll knock on wood for you as well it's been a trooper yeah (laughs) Uh, and then we lost channel 5 for a while we did lose channel 5 (laughs) rest in peace channel 5 but somehow channel 5 is back now (laughs) it just didn't it didn't work on the last year of the tour I lost click for like like two songs and had to rig up the backup rig whilst playing yeah and again That's no one insane. knew it was just yeah but yeah <laughs> welcome back shout out channel five yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice one. um did i read somewhere that you were bitten by a tick in berlin yes was that on stage that was i don't know if that was on stage or if it was before that's scary um i mean yeah i <laughs> i didn't know what it was when i saw it and then i realized I tried to like get rid of it and I realized, okay, this isn't just anything. This is attached itself to my skin. So I pulled it out of my skin after about 10 minutes and realized, oh, there's a part still there. Yeah. So the head was stuck and um, yeah, I had to go to a doctor. And then it was even worse because at the doctors, they like- <laughs> Was this um, before the show or after the show? This was after the show. So oh, okay. I got home from the show, um, looked at myself or like went into the shower, realized, oh, there's something on my, <laughs> on my butt. <laughs> 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 oh no! And and, um, and yeah, and then I had to go to the doctor the next day because I was like, I, sh- I probably should get someone to help me get rid of this. You did the right thing. I, I think I did, I, and they said that as well. But yeah. the the funny thing is, I thought it would be like a matter of like one second. She needed half an hour, and she yeah. had to get a second doctor to come in and remove the head. You have to get re- like specialized tweezers because yeah. dogs get them quite a lot because they hang. Basically, a tick hangs on long grass. Mm-hmm. So if you take your dog on a walk, how do you know this? I'm a tick <laughs> expert, my friend. How do, do you, you not have know you been this? bitten before? I've not, but I've had a <laughs> friend that had. Yeah. That was, and they had to drive like six hours to a hospital to take it out straight away. Shit. They're, they're super dangerous. Yeah, they are super dangerous. So, but you and I, funnily enough, on my Instagram feed, this is how much I'm. In to ticks um, <laughs> on my Instagram feed the other day a video popped up of how to remove one from a dog because oh, the wow. dog had got one in its back and it did like I a saw that too thing. Yeah. Did you, hey good <laughs> algorithm <laughs> bro <laughs> interest <laughs> so yeah you did the right thing I getting did it the removed. right thing but yeah lucky for me like the doctor was just a 10 minute walk from oh, where I was nice. staying um, but yeah it was also really embarrassing though having like a second doctor come in I was just like <laughs> flat on my stomach <laughs> my pants are off <laughs> and then the second doctor comes in and is like what do we got here <laughs> so yeah so we've heard quite a few bad things that have happened to you <laughs> no. we've had the ticks <laughs> I feel like and I need to bring some positive <laughs> energy. So, switch this. what do you consider to be the highlights or thing you're most proud of that maybe you would you would tell someone that didn't know you were a musician, um, yeah, about what you've achieved or whatever? The thing I'm most proud of. Um, so, I if someone asked me like what am I most proud of, I would definitely say the fact that um, that we kind of built this up ourselves. So we never signed a major record deal. We, um, my best friend and I, so also a guy I met at university, we were both studying together. We started a record label, which at the time we were like, what the fuck are we doing? This is 
going to be insane. I was signed as a songwriter and I was writing for other people. I was writing for like a DJ project. Um, and so I started earning a little bit of money and I put all that money into this record label that we started. We called it Paper Plane Records um, just because no one wanted to sign us. There were like record labels interested, but it was those talks of like, we want to hear some more productions. Maybe you work with other producers. This song, we're not really sure about the song. It might be too rocky, too poppy. Like they wanted to change everything. Yeah. And I was, at the time, I was just so sure that this was going to be an EP that I put out whether they liked it or not. Um, and so I was just really impatient. And I said to Paul, I was like, let's just do it. Let's, let's start this record label. Um, and the funny thing was, is that one of the songs on that EP was the, like the first song we released um, called No Roots. And that was the one that then started generating a little bit of hype. And, and that was the one that kind of started getting put into playlists after a few months it started like just it had like that snowball effect of yep. people wanting to listen to it and um and then it was really funny to come see these record labels come back and be like actually we're really interested <laughs> in like <laughs> i told what, you so it wasn't too rocky <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah, like, though yeah. and so i think that is one of the things i'm most proud of is is the fact that we've up till now still kept our record label so i i own the rights um and I, I can make my own creative decisions. If I want to have two years of a break, I can do that. If I want to put out an EP that sounds very different, I can do that. If I have something that's really unsuccessful or whatever, I can do that and then say, okay, well, I'm releasing the next thing two months later, r later, rather than having a record label be like, okay, we need to rethink the whole plot. Like maybe we, we need to make you guys more, I don't know, like punk. Punk's really in right now, yeah. so let's go punk. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something that I really cherished um of having this freedom and never that pressure from someone above I, I mean i have my own pressure in my own head of like wanting to make things people like but at the same time um i'm just thankful that like i don't have like i've seen other artists really um suffer from that pressure and i don't want to have that i always want music to kind of be the one thing that I still enjoy. Like, you know, when you make a hobby your job, it's like, well, it's not really your hobby anymore. Mm, and yeah. and it's still fun, but it's like this pressure that you always have to succeed or that you can't really just play a song for fun anymore because you always connect it with work. Yeah. Um, and I just, I feel like I've always wanted to try and avoid that. I think it's so cool that you did that at the start as well, when you're at the beginning of the journey and those voices would be quite tempting because yeah. you think oh they've got power and yeah, they might be able to get us somewhere but you stuck to absolutely. your guns that's really cool yeah I mean we were tempted there were people who were like we can bring you like we when No Roots was then put out there were a lot of labels inviting us to like see a whole like we had a whole tour of Capitol Records um, they were looking to sign us uh, there was a, like a bunch of record labels but I think in the end it was really the smart decision we, we did sign in america with an indie label who we thought was just super cool and they took care of like the american and canadian market because we had no idea like yeah. we were i had no idea how much radio promotion costs i had no idea um the amount of work it is when when you do radio promo in the states that it's like literally getting up at five in the morning flying to um the next city doing three or four radio stations doing like radio shows for all these stations, doing meet and greets, then actually doing your show in the evening, falling asleep at like midnight, waking up again at five o'clock to do the next city and doing for that, like doing that for weeks and weeks. Um, Cause that was intense, yeah, but it was it. so, it was so good to learn that and to, um, and to work with them because they did such an amazing job and they also respected the artist rather than just see it as a machine and be like, yeah. okay, we need to pump out all of this out of you all at once. So let's take it back to day one. What are your memories from your first ever tour? First ever tour? Um, I guess it depends what you define as, as a tour. Like how many concerts do you need for something to be a tour? 18. 18? I, <laughs> I, I think uh, two. Yeah. Two. Yeah, like two one, one after the other, like like being away, that feeling of like being away for the first time and on like, a bus or, you know, or okay. on a van or, or, or yeah. whatever, like what? Um, okay, then I'd have to say the first experience would be the one where we we did our first American tour, where we were like, okay, we're j we have no idea what to expect. Let's just do this. Um, and it was it was pretty insane. It was um, it was a really nice time, but 
at the time itself, it was stressful. Like it was just, I was just always under pressure. I felt like I couldn't sleep. Um, but it was really nice to kind of just see people's reactions for the first time. Even if we were playing like, I don't know, 100 to 200 capacity locations, it was really interesting to just kind of like, that was, yeah, that was our first kind of proper, like we'd played shows within Germany because that's where we started. And we'd do like, one show there, a week later, another show there, but never for like a whole amount of time, like a proper tour. Yeah. Um, so I definitely learned a lot. Um, we stayed in some pretty shady places, uh, which I learned later on you probably shouldn't stay at. Um, although I feel <laughs> I should be careful what I say. <laughs> yeah, it's a chain of motels. Is that where you pay by the hour? Is that, that kind of... Kind of, yeah. And no, like no one's at the front desk. Basically, anyone can come into your room at any time. They could just, like, the locks aren't that secure. You just literally push open the door and someone can, and the areas we were staying in as well. Like, it was just, but at the time, we are like, this is fun. We're from Europe. Like, this is, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it just feels like a film, doesn't it? Like, <laughs> bad stuff happens in the movies. Only. Yeah, it's and <laughs> I mean, even though my accent sounds um, American, I mean, I, I grew up in Canada, but I didn't really, like, I, I'd never really spent that much time in America. So for me, I was like, yeah, I'm sure this is fine. Like we won't, nothing will happen here. And then you read like about these horrible things that happen on the news yeah. um, in, in these motels and all over America. Um, but yeah, sorry, I've, I'm going into like a negative touch again about <laughs> touring. Good. Touring is great. I mean, just to tour, we, we stayed in a motel in America once and yeah. we barricaded the door. <laughs> and we were like, we are no all, th- all three of us outside. in one room. <laughs> all three of us in one room. We got an extra bed. Yeah, we had to yeah. get our own bed as well. Yeah. We had to carry our yeah. bed. Yeah. How are the beds though? Because the like not comfort wise, but just like I ha- my beds had stains everywhere. Oh no! So the guy, oh the God. guy at the desk, literally led me down the stairs to to get my bed out of a cupboard and I had to carry it myself oh my up God, to that's the amazing. motel room. Yeah. I love that. And then <laughs> shut the door and I was like, guys, I think this is a bit sketchy. <laughs> and then we heard like gunshots. Yeah, the, the windows had yeah. bars. Oh my God. Gunshots, but that we had intense. just arrived, so it was like jet lag was really hitting us quite hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we slept, we slept okay. And then we woke <laughs> up in the morning and met Patrick Stewart for breakfast. Yeah. Wow. It was, it, it, was, it was just a very, like, we went for like a bougie breakfast. Yeah. Like with the label and um, it was just a, just a crazy, like, you know, when, we were in that motel to then go into this really bougie restaurant and ended up chatting with like Patrick Stewart. Yeah. That's pretty insane. Was, like, the two the sides contrast. Of, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. contrast. And then thankfully we went to our nice Airbnb with yeah, no bars guess. on the windows. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like you guys had some awesome times in America. <laughs> yeah. We should, we should travel in motels more. I think. <laughs> more the only thing I've learned today is trust the motels yes. in the US. Motels all the way. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I've, we've had some really fun experiences too. I just want to like mention we've had some great experiences, but like the first tour, yeah, the first tour is always like, it's exciting, you know, like you don't know what to expect mm. and every day is a new adventure. Um, you're constantly tired, obviously, because like it's when you're touring America, I feel you like, I, I mean, at least that's the way our label did it with us in the sense that they're like, yeah, we're going to pack as much as we can into this time of space, space of time, time of space space of time um and uh but yeah i had i had so much fun and i wouldn't change anything about it and what has changed from then to now how how different oh. has the uh is the american experience even now or general touring experience no motels <laughs> no motels um or at least mo- no motels in in places we shouldn't be in a motel right. um how has it changed to be fair we haven't actually done our own american tour in three years. So since COVID, we haven't properly been back. We went back with Bastille to open for their shows. Oh, nice. Um, but we were on a bus there, so that was kind of like, uh, it, it didn't really make much of a, it, I mean, well, it was- And you didn't it, go to the Banana Museum. And we didn't go to the Banana Museum. What? Do you guys have that where everything just becomes one big blur? Yeah. And you're just kind of like, it all happened on one day, but it's been like six years. Yeah. I'm and really you're bad trying for, to- Like when you were saying, have you been to Prague? Yeah. Like I may well have played there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you have no idea. My memory of cities is so bad because <laughs> yeah. you often just play the venue, yeah, get back yeah, on the exactly. bus, go to sleep, and exactly. then you've you left it. Yeah. But yeah, I totally get that. Yeah. Um, we, we did, <laughs> we've had so many fun experiences there. I'm just trying to think like what, what one thing stood out. There was one day that stood out, but it wasn't actually anything special. We, we went into a park. There was a bar right there. Um, and then there was a restaurant. We all sat there until like two in the morning, had a great time. Um, I think after every show we tried to kind of just find a bar in each city and just chill out. Like 
I think the Bastille guys are some of the nicest guys yeah. I've ever met on tour, and I'm sure you guys can confirm that. <laughs> um, we always say that as well. Like we had like Woody on the show on on the show like yeah. season one, and we said that to him that everyone says that that they're just the nicest guys because they are the nicest guys. Like I um, I had my concerns going all the way over to America to tour again. But then when the, once I met them and realized how nice they were, and especially like afterwards, so they, they then asked us if we wanted to do the European tour with them. So then we got to tour Europe with them in November, December of last year. Um, and then Woody afterwards, he's like, hey, let's, let's write a song. And I literally just put out the song that we wrote together with Woody. So, um, amazing. so it's one of those things that like, I don't know, I just, I, I got along with everyone on that team. Um, I love their crew. They're so nice. They're so um, understanding, and they work so fucking hard. Um, and it was it was so enlightening for me to see. Like, I think that's one of the coolest, best tours I've ever been on. Um, and I'm just happy that we could stay in touch and and just like, yeah, do still do fun stuff together. So, yeah, I uh, sweet. <laughs> yeah, just, just pause because <laughs> this could end in another. They oh all my drop. God. We, we, we're not even that close to the kitchen. We're quite we're the other side of the, yeah. the room to the kitchen. <laughs> the hotel bar the they kitchen. probably thought you guys wanted some sound effects just to make yeah. it sound yeah. more yeah. legit. Like I'll add some reverb to that and it'll bar. sound gorgeous. There's like wind chimes. <laughs> it's probably the quietest hotel bar that we've recorded an episode. There's only three other people in the whole hotel bar, isn't it? Yeah. Try to think of a quieter. I mean, it is a, what day is it today? Wednesday? Tuesday. Tuesday. It is a Tuesday, Tuesday evening. Yeah, Tuesday evening. So maybe evening. people aren't like painting the town red yet. Yeah. And that, I yeah. guess the Hilton isn't the place that you would, <laughs> if you were painting the town, you, would, you wouldn't be hitting the Hilton, would you? <laughs> I mean, the Halo bar in Hilton is pretty cool. It's but, pretty lit. Yeah. Uh, it's, I'm having a great time. So we're putting together um, a big list um, of our rider. Well, basically, we're trying to improve our rider, basically. Um, so okay. we're asking everyone that we have on what they have on so we can... Steal their ideas. Steal their ideas oh, and nice. create the ultimate rider yeah. of, of all time. So um, what's on your rider? What's the most outrageous <laughs> thing? So you guys can steal yeah, my, basically. my magnificent rider ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm so boring. I just put Bavarian pretzels. Bavarian pretzels? Yeah. Okay. Hey, that's not boring at all. No, is it actually shout. something I love, unique? I love some pretzels. Yeah. Pretzels are so good, but they're not sweet. They're salty, eh? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. What, what's the, yeah. Uh, the Bavarian element? They're just for, like the best ones you get are in Bavaria. I mean, I don't, I don't ask them to be imported from be Bavaria. Imported. I mean, they have to be. <laughs> they have to be from Bavaria. <laughs> um, no, no, no. I just, I, I like pretzels in general. I think if I see pretzels, I'm like, oh, this is really nice because I lived in Munich for five years, and pretzels was like my my dinner, my lunch, my breakfast. Are these like the, the big chunky like meal the big ones? Chunk, oh, the big yeah. ones, not the, the small. I was, oh, oh, I was no. thinking the little crunchy no. things. No, no, Sorry, no, no. with a no, little no, bit no. of salt. Big ones, the big, like like the whole. Like a big pretzel. Oh, like a Mr. Have pretzel. you guys been to Oktoberfest? We have yes. actually, yeah. So have you seen the big pretzels there? No. We didn't. Think what? Really? They're at every stand. You guys really? can... Yeah. We had, do we have hot dogs? <laughs> we had a lot of steins. <laughs> yeah, we drank a lot of beer. I'm not sure we ate any pretzels. We they sell them... You JC was eat. eating like the little ones. These are great Bavarian pretzels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, we, we were literally on tour in, in Munich and we had a day off. Yeah. And we were literally like... We got to the hotel and we were like, oh, what should we do? Um, and we literally looked on a map and we're like, oh, uh, I think Oktoberfest's on. And we literally... That like, is lucky. It was like a five minute walk. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like legit five minute walk yeah. to the to the place. And we were like, so oh good. my God. And yeah. We, yeah, we had a day off hit after. the jackpot. Yeah. Like, it's insane, isn't it? It's I feel like that insane. was secretly planned by the tour manager. <laughs> but we, did, we had no idea. Yeah, I know, yeah. To organize planned. your tour exactly on the day where you'll be uh, in Munich exactly, and, yeah. at October. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that happening. Um, Octoberfest is great. But yeah, look out for the pretzels. The big ones, not the small ones. Okay, so, um, so other than pretzels, <laughs> other than what pretzels, else is on there? Uh, I like to put margarine on there. Margarine? So I like... For the pretzels? Um, for the pretzels. Really? Yeah. Cut it open and then put them... Put margarine Do you toast in. them? Are they already toasted? No, I don't toast them. I just put the margarine inside. Because then you'd have to have a toaster on your rider as well. Because in, mm. well, in Germany, they call it a butterbreze, um, which means they put butter in the pretzel, but I can't eat butter because I have a milk allergy. So I like to put margarine in instead. Yeah, so that's what I like to do, and I like uh, I put sandwich stuff on my rider. So anything for making sandwiches, and um, it's actually really cool because if the um, if the catering's really shit, you can just eat a sandwich. Yeah, 
that's actually another theme of that tour where we ended up at Oktoberfest. Every hotel we stayed in, we made sandwiches from for the road. The we were just skinny, yeah. weren't we? We, were yeah. just <laughs> we, we still make sandwiches. Yeah, those were the days. Let's get into your eyes. Let's get we're going to be making. This is it's the last two we went on now. Who doesn't it? like making a sandwich at the hotel breakfast? Two As hours it, later, you're on the bus and you suddenly remember yeah. you've got a napkin wrapped them out. Yeah. Yeah. We, so, used to like, we used to leave like, we, we, you, the whole thing, you get like a, a napkin yeah. and then you make your sandwich up from the breakfast thing and then you put that in that pocket and then you get another one. And yeah, we'd literally leave just like Big leaving pockets. crumbs as we walked out. Well, but see, and I totally respect that. Um, Simon, who is, um, he's part of our crew, he literally comes down five minutes before breakfast closes, takes a tote bag, and just puts everything wow. in his tote bag every place we went to. And he was never like embarrassed or he's like, I'm paying for it, so I might as well take it. <laughs> well, I guess that might answer our next question, but we were going to say, do you have any touring top tips? Touring to have to take a tote bag with you. Little hacks to get by on the road. Um, yeah. Tour tips. Or maybe what couldn't Ooh. you live without? If there's something you always have to take with you or... So on a tour bus, I would say I always take my own pillow. Nice. Um, because the pillows on the tour bus um, often just aren't as comfortable. And I'm someone, if I don't have the right pillow, I just sleep really badly. Mm. So I take a pillow. I take my own pillow case. Um, I take uh, sleeping... Not sleeping pills, but like anything that'll help me get to sleep. Yeah. Um, any kind of ear, um, what's it called again? Like I sleep with in ears in and music on because. With music on? Yeah. Oh, wow. But like sleeping music. I can't sleep sleeping on a music. bus. I For me, I've so I figured out this year the only way I can sleep on a bus is if I sleep in the lounge. So I'm like <laughs> that one person that when you come into the bus is just asleep on the sofa in the lounge rather than in the beds. Um, is that because of other people snoring or whatever or just? Um, no, I think it's because, um, I mean, the sound is just because I, I don't like the sound of the bus. Like the, the brumming of it mm -hmm. just keeps me awake all night. I need silence or like calming music. Um, but also I feel super claustrophobic. Like I'm always terrified that something's going to fall on me because they're quite like they're like coffins really yeah <laughs> you're like entering your coffin yeah um and i think i would i would wake up every two hours feeling very sick very nauseous um and very dizzy so i tried it once where i just fell asleep in the lounge or like even just the front area where people sit and it works perfectly so i just have to hope that it's not like very um very wobbly because otherwise i'll i'll fall off obviously but no I, like i i really enjoy sleeping on the couch on a bus yeah, and we all know how important sleep is on a tour. So important. Yeah, yeah, that's been mentioned quite a few times actually by guests. Yeah, um, I found a really good pair of ear blockers, like sound blockers. Really? Um, called Sleepios. Sleepios. Of today's show. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's so good. You're having trouble getting to sleep. <laughs> yeah, but that's but amazing. Great, honestly, I'm okay. a really light sleeper, and that's yeah. been an issue for me. And yeah. They kind of like they mold to your ear yeah. and you really can't hear anything. I think I was gifted ones some. Yeah. That, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm always scared they're going to just slip into my no, ear. They're though. good, honestly. Yeah? I, I would recommend. Is that what I would. So, yeah. our tour manager gifted me a set because I bunked with him on the last show we did. Yeah. And he was like, I snore and you're going to need them. <laughs> oh, wow. And I, I've kept them since. And obviously, they were a fresh pair. Yeah. And they are wicked. Yeah. I use them all the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, really good. Okay. No danger of it like. Melting into in. your ear. Yeah, no, they're really okay, perfect. Good. Yeah, I have good. small ears as well, so I feel like it wouldn't be able to do that anyway. But I'm gonna remember that for next time. Yeah, mm, sleepy <laughs> Okay, on to my favorite section. Oh wow! Now. Okay. So, other than the guy on the plane in Prague, have you had any beef with anybody in the music world? Oh, okay. In touring life, in recording life, another artist, any beef you want to air, anything you want to get off your chest. <laughs> like, I hate that guy, his songs suck. Um, I don't know, any, any That's beef? That's so funny. Um, gosh, have I had beef? I'm not really a very argumentative person. Um, I'm, I'm like stubborn. I'd say the biggest beef I've had with anyone is funnily enough, my, my best friend, who's also my manager, who I started the label with. Um, him and I, like, I don't know if you've had this where if you guys were friends before you started a band. Um, but we were like good friends before we started. But as soon as you start working with someone, the relationship changes. Yeah. And I mean, I've known him now for since I was 20. So like nine years. Um, and 
it's really interesting to watch our friendship kind of evolve, but go from like these phases of getting along well to being like, we can't work with each other anymore. This is, this is too difficult to like, I need you. you and, and mm. like feeling very um, dependent on them. Um, I'd say like, yeah, my, my manager and I, we've had some, some big up and downs, but the thing is I, he's always been my biggest supporter and I know he always comes from the best place. Like his, he's always going to, support my vision I feel mm -hmm. um, and I think that's worth so much in this industry um, so yeah I don't think I've ever had beef with an artist I, I have had it with an artist once where um, <gasps> here we go <laughs> all it took this was is five minutes <laughs> <laughs> who is um, it who is it so uh, this, I'm not going to name any need, names I'm name not going to name any names um, I, I did a, I did a song with an artist okay that's researchable <laughs> <laughs> I did a song with an artist oh, yeah. and, and, um, and I, um, and it was really cool and it was, and I was a big fan of this artist. Um, and we got along really well. Um, I'm getting nervous telling this story. <laughs> I've never told anyone this story, but it makes me so sad. Um, because I, I re really respected this artist and, uh, I was a feature on their song. Um, and we recorded like the song and the video and everything, um, but when it came to the promo of it, um, I, I th their their label came back to me saying, um, "So this is the time frame." And I was like, "Oh, that's that's really unfortunate because we're also promoting um, our own song at that time. Is there any way we can like fit in both things? Like, can we move one?" They're like, "No, no, no. This is definitely happening here. You're gonna have to adjust." So I was like, "Okay, well, I'll try and do all the promo stuff that's possible." Um, but weirdly enough, when it came to doing the promo, um, they kind of let me hanging. So I was promoting their song on a lot of the things. And then um, a lot of like promo appointments were kind of um, colliding. Mm -hmm. So there was this one big one um, in the UK that I couldn't do. And they were really upset about it. And I don't think it was ever communicated that we were just trying, like we couldn't move our appointments either because we had planned them months in advance. Um, and so this person ended up recording the song again with someone else what? and didn't tell me. And I had to find out then just like through Spotify where I was like, oh, wow. The song was never released. It was, so we, oh. ours was released as the main one, but for some odd reason it was released again with another singer. And I was like, this is really sad. Like I oh, was that in the same language because obviously same sometimes same language, get features. Yeah, yeah. same like everything, same words, same everything. Um, and and this person didn't even like the artist didn't even come to me and say why this happened. Um, and we never got to talk about it either. And and it makes me sad to this day because I I respected this artist so much. Like I was a huge fan and. Um, and it just, yeah, it made me sad because I tried everything to, to try and like move our thing so that we could do some of the promo, but there was a bunch of it that we just couldn't do. And this yeah. was like one of our, our biggest streaming songs at the time. So, um, and yeah, we haven't really spoken since. Um, and I've never really reached out in the sense and said, hey, by the way, why did you do this? Because I think now's the time. <laughs> now is the time we are in the podcast. Let's get if you're on listening Twitter right now, <laughs> send some hate mail that way right now. Let's air it out. Oh man, no. I'm I'm one of those people like the thing is I don't know how much was the artist's decision and was the label's decision. Yeah. I think the label can be very persuasive at times and say like, "Hey, this person can't do this promo. You're going to have to record the song again with someone else." I mean, the version we did still streams more than the other version. There but, we go. Uh, That's what I say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it just made me sad cuz like I like open communication. I like transparency. Mm. And if they had just come to me saying, hey, by the way, we're going to record this with someone else as well. Is that okay for you? I'd be like, yeah, I totally, like, it's sad, but I totally get it. If that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. Yeah. So it's like a really weird move for them to do because it was a, a weird fan, move. Like a fan's perspective. Yeah. It's going to be totally confused. Yeah. You're like, why is the same song coming out yeah. two months later with the different person? Did they hate the first person? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, it's something that definitely made me very sad for a long time. Well, shame on them, <laughs> whoever they are, whoever they are. And I will never say who it is. We'll find out and put it in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> if you fast forward to minute thirty-six. <laughs> you're in the beef with. I'm joking. Yeah, we won't. Really. <laughs> um, okay, so we've come to the um, to the last section. Oh man. Okay. Um, All right. It, it just goes so fast. It really does. Um, this is the, the quick fire round 
section. Okay. It's basically the first thing that comes to your mind. So you, when we say, yeah, if we would say like cats, you would say dogs and you, or whatever you would say. Or whiskers. Okay. Whiskers. Okay. <laughs> yeah, or whatever. Um, and you can, you can answer as just one word. Yeah. So you can answer as just that. Yeah. Or you can... Divulge, elaborate. elaborate. That's the one. There you go. <laughs> Divulge. Divulge. Okay, so I have the option to elaborate. Yeah, you yes. can do, but Perfect. you can just leave it if you want. Okay. Um, so um, I'll start off. So when we say no roots, you say. Uh, God, what do I say? Um, okay, this is like a practice round. This is so. This is, no, this is this is one. This, this, this is the this real is, round. Yeah, this is real. We went this straight. This is the not so quick fire oh. round. <laughs> Cats was the practice round. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, my brain works really slowly. Okay, so no roots. I would say, uh, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Um, Berlin. Do I uh, need to elaborate on that one? If you want to. Um, uh, yeah, I'll shortly elaborate. Uh, I just recorded my very first EP there, um, and it was at this place called the Funk House, um, and it was super, super cool because everything was like. There were squatters, there were people le- living illegal. Like it was just so run down, but it was so cool. I've been told to check that place out actually. Yes, yeah. da- I mean, don't check, it doesn't make sense now because they've like, they've done the whole, um, what's it called? Gentrification of it. Like there's like modern stuff in there. That ha- But when I was in there, it was like super rough. There was like paint falling off of the ceilings. The lights didn't work. Sounds like a um, motel in America. <laughs> Oh, it was crazy. (laughs) Like nighttime, just walking through there and just hoping that nothing happened. Um, And it was like at the, it was like not even in the middle of Berlin. It's like way outside of Berlin. Takes like half an hour to get there. Um, But yeah, that would be my, my first word. Berlin. Very Berlin. Berlin. Good first answer. Um, When we say the voice of Germany. (laughs) Uh, I would say Claudia. Claudia was my candidate who then won in the end. Oh, well cool. done. That's Thank wicked. you. I mean, you can, I, I can't take the thanks because she won, but she's on my team. So well done. Cool. Well done, Claudia. Well done, Claudia. Okay, when we say paper plane records, you say? I say... Well, I'm really, really bad at the speed round. Um, paper plane records, I would just say... Uh, Paul. I shouldn't say names, though. I'm, almost, I'm just saying names. Um, paper plane records. God, this is really hard. This is like the hardest part of the game. <laughs> It's not a game. It this is, is serious. Who <laughs> <laughs> said this was a game? Okay, paper plane records. I'm gonna say um, hard work. Hard nice. work. Hard okay. work. A That's lot of it. hard work. Um, okay, when we say Bastille, you say love. As in, <laughs> as in, I love them. Okay. As in, like they're amazing people, and I had the time of my life on their tour, and I miss them. That's good. That's good. I'm just going to pause the quick fire round. Oh, for yeah. <laughs> so many trolleys <sighs> passing around. I love it. it <laughs> it's one of my least favorite noises. <laughs> when we say Germany, what's the first thing that springs to mind? I mean, unfortunately, beer. As in, like, beer, as in, like, drinking. But Un- do you say unfortunately? Yeah. That's, that's not Be- unfortunate. Well, because it's such a stereotype. Because it's like... But unfortunately, yeah, that's this. I'm going to pick the stereotype, but I really should pick something like beautiful landscapes and mountains. And I'm just Pre- going to go pretzels. with pretzels. <laughs> pretzels. Can I change my answer to Bavarian pretzels? No. Yeah, we yes. <laughs> okay, we're going to end on a deep one. When oh, we no. say Alice Merton. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, work in progress? Someone else said that. I was going to say, I think we've Someone else said that. I mean, we all are, theoretically. It's the most probably obvious answer of what you are. I mean, what would you say if someone went JC? Uh, Icon. Icon. (laughs) Legend. Complete. (laughs) Complete it, mate. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> working. No, I, I agree with the work in progress. I'm trying to think who it was. I feel like it was. Was it? Was, was it, it Tom Shea? Maybe from Gorillas. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, I love that you pointed over there because that's the table yeah. that we did the podcast <laughs> in. <laughs> You're like that? Shea <laughs> over there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what is he there? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Great, awesome. Well, cool. that's the, that's like the that end answer. of the Well, thank you so much for having, the podcast. having no, me, guys. Thank you. Is there anything really else fun. you, you want to add? Then I'll get off my chest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> any more beefs? <laughs> <laughs> any, any more beef? <laughs> any more fights? Um, no, I think we've we've mentioned so much. It was really nice meeting you guys. You too. And um, I, hope I, I hope it was fun for you guys as well and it it's wasn't too tedious. And a brilliant <laughs> drink choice as well. Thank you. Can, can, I, can, I, can I ask what the um, usual drink is that's ordered? Is it beer? It's Do normally beer, yeah. Yeah? Well, it changes. I think we've had a few beers, but we've Champagne had like or Bucks Fizz. We've had Bucks Fizz coffee. there. We've had Coff- coffee. Yeah, we've done quite a few in the morning, so yeah. it's like, um, yeah, coffee, coffee, coffee teas. But then it nice. ends up being a beer. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then was beer. I the first gin and tonic? Yeah, I think so. Wow. I don't think, yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think we've had gin and tonic. Uh, it's yeah. a quiet taste. I feel like I'm going to continue the evening drinking gin and tonic now. <laughs> I think that's the safe bet as well, because I think if you mix anything now, you end up crying. Because we're going for a meal like, now. Yeah. And You're I going think, for a meal? Where are you guys going? A uh, place called... Going? Uh, what's oh, it yeah, called? Burger King. Like, yeah, Burger King. King. <laughs> K- uh, K- KF. Cafe, K- Caf- <laughs> Cafe Bohime. Cafe Bohime. Where yeah. is it's, in, uh, it's on Old Compton Street. Old Compton Street, Old Street Compton apparently. Street. Okay. Was it a recommendation? Or? We're meeting our um, A&R from our record label. A wonderful record label. Who happens to be called Tick. Who happens to be called Tick. His name is Tick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whoa. We're going to go see a doctor Don't immediately tell him the after. Tick story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's so cool. What, what label are you guys signed to? Red Bull um, Records. Red Bull. Oh, nice. Shout Very out cool. Red Bull Records and all the crew. <laughs> and Tick, who we're about to meet at KFC <laughs> shortly. And, and, and drink some, uh, some gin and tonics. Some with. G&T. G&Ts. Um, we'll, we'll, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, tally up. Well, yeah, no, thanks so much for, for, for coming. And um, Yeah, we'll see you. If there's uh, ever a season two, I'll, I'm happy to come back. This, <laughs> okay. is, this, this, is, season, this is season two. This is season two. <laughs> yeah. there's season three. three. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> We'll do a recap, but just have some more beef between now okay, and then. Okay, more yeah. beef with more just people. Just basically kick off. Just stat, yeah. yeah. And then okay. we'll do the start Sounds some rumors. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. I will work on that. <laughs> Wicked. Thank awesome. you very Thank much. You. Thank you. A huge thanks to Alice for being part of the podcast and the Islington Hilton Hotel Bar for having us yet again. Yes. I think it was the third, fourth or fifth time we've recorded a podcast there now, even if they did provide us with their own sound effects. Yeah, what were they doing? We couldn't do this podcast without you guys listening, so a huge thanks to you for being part of the Floors family. If you do like what you hear, then let us know. There's nothing better than getting a little DM on the Floors page or on, or on the Meet at the Hotel bar saying how much you enjoyed a certain story or how our sultry tones helped bring to life an otherwise long and boring morning commute for you. And make sure you like, comment, and subscribe anywhere and everywhere you can. It's all about that algorithm. You can find us most places at Meet at the Hotel Bar or meetatthehotelbar.com. It really does make so much difference for us as an independent podcast in trying to climb those big, badass podcast charts. Join us next time when we'll be chatting to everyone's favorite backflipper, Aston from JLS. Expect stories of Vegas memory loss, why JLS have a no white towel policy in their dressing room, impromptu arena power cut acapellas, and getting a life-changing phone call from the Jackson family. Only on 